Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another GingerRunner.com review, and today we're reviewing a shoe from Saucony. This fluorescent mega monster is the Saucony Zealot ISO. ISO? ISO blinded by the bright colors? So the reason I'm reviewing this shoe is because it came highly recommended from a number of viewers out there. They were like, hey, listen, we know you love the Kinvara. You gotta try the Zealot. You're gonna be blown away by it. And now that I put a ton of miles into it, I have to say, not really blown away, but I am happy with it. It's a decent shoe for neutral runners that are looking to add a shoe to their closet that can essentially get them those longer distance runs. It has plenty of cushioning, plenty of upper support, a couple of things that I really like about it, and some things that I don't really like. So in no particular order, except it's in some sort of order, here are the things I like and dislike about the Saucony Zealot ISO, starting with things that I like. The upper technology, what am I talking about? The ISO fit. The upper of this shoe is unique. I've run in shoes that have similar tech, but this one really grasps it by the horns and rides it for eight seconds. There's a soft mesh layer that wraps around your foot, kind of like a sock, and then there's this overlay cage material that wraps around that, and that is what you lace down tighter. So you essentially have two layers working with and against each other to tighten down the midfoot of the shoe, and makes for a nice dialed-in fit. Wide toe box. Now this shoe surprised me by being stretchy where it needed to be stretchy. The toe box, uh, while not super wide, is definitely flexible and allows for a bit wider range of foot widths and gives your toes plenty of room to splay or dance apparently cushion now i definitely consider this a cushion shoe has power grid eva throughout pretty soft cushioned material i don't think it's nearly as soft as the kinvara i still have a preference for that eva but it is a good cushion and you can really feel it when you sit back on your heels a little bit rock your heel back and forth and the difference between this outsole rubber and the eva material is very noticeable you can feel it just by simply rocking in your heels and finally offset uh four millimeter offset in this shoe which is right in that sweet spot for me it's a lot like the Kinvara in that sense and all of the runs that i've done in this shoe have been a nice comfortable long run and i never notice any heel drag that i do get from some shoes that have an over pronounced or over cushioned heel so it's nice nice sweet spot but now onto the things i dislike the upper tech i know i mentioned i liked it but there are some things about it i don't like the fact that there are two separate layers can pose problems especially if you're running in any sort of gravel or light dirt you start getting debris in there and it causes problems. The other issue I have with the upper is very similar to some of the burrito style uppers and that's that this outer cage material when tightened down too tightly can make that inner mesh material overlap and cause a bit of discomfort. Heel outsole. You will really notice this on descents, but I just don't like the uneven feel in that heel, which I mentioned earlier, really overcompensates with more durable, denser material here on the lateral side of the heel, and you can feel it on descents and any other instance where you happen to heel strike. And finally, weight. Nine and a half ounces. It's actually pretty heavy, especially for a road shoe that is so similar to something like the Kinvara, which you could get and save weight and get a little bit more cushioning. I just think it's a, it's a bit heavy of a shoe, and I think that double layer upper is, is definitely contributing to that. And the denser outsole materials. So as I mentioned, pleasantly surprised by this shoe. I have put a lot of really good miles in it, had a lot of fun in it. If you're looking at a road shoe to take you to the marathon distance, I would definitely consider this, but I'd also put your foot in other Saucony's like the Kinvara or even the Triumph to really gauge which shoe would work for you. Now let's get on with the points. Quality, I think they have some good things going on here. I'm going to give it four out of five. I like that upper. I like the cushion material. Comfort, I'm going to give it three out of five. This borderline four out of five, but really this EVA isn't the only thing contributing to overall comfort. The upper having to really lock that down and getting overlay in the inner mesh material caused some discomfort for me. Price at $130, I think you're better off finding an old pair of Kinvara 5s or something where you can save some cash. Three out of five on price. And finally, looks, it is bright, it is loud, and I like it. Four out of five. That brings a grand total to 14 out of 20 for the Saucony Zealot ISO. Pretty decent score for a pretty decent shoe. Definitely want to get your foot in here and try this before you just make a splurge purchase. And know that there are other Saucony's out there that I do prefer over this one if that is the brand or the type of shoe that you're looking for. Yay! And that is it for today's review, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, like, favorite, subscribe, and share this video. And make sure you follow me across the social networks. Over on Twitter, it's at TheGingerRunner. On Facebook, Facebook.com slash TheGingerRunner. On Instagram, it's at Ethan Newberry. Of course, GingerRunner.com. Live shows every single Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And visit Patreon.com slash TheGingerRunner to find out how you can join the Patreon crew. That's it. We'll see you guys next week with another review. Who knows? You'll never know. Subscribe. Get out there. Train hard, race harder, party hardest. I know I am. Peace.